Professor, do you hear me? Yes. 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 Uh, do you see my presentation or not? Yes, uh, welcome, Professor. Uh, five minutes uh, later, we are going to start your presentation. Uh, we should uh, wait the time. Do you see my... Yes, yes, we, we can see your uh, screen, no problem. Doug, my screen is sharing. Do you see it? Do you yes. see my screen? Yes, we can see your screen. Yes? Yes, no problem. Okay, then we can start. Okay, I am going to okay. give information. You. you are welcome. Five minutes later, you can start your presentation. Yes. Okay, okay, thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. I am Ivan Kostic from Slovak Academy of Sciences. Thank you for invitation to give the lecture about the electron beam lithography. Electron beam lithography is one of the basic technology in microelectronics in production and also in research. So the motivation of my, my talk is to give you some remarks on the uh, state of the art of electron beam lithography in production, but also in the research. In production, electron beam lithography is very slow. Nevertheless, in last years, multiple electron beam lithography is developed as an alternative method for some limited application. And for photomass fabrication, electron beam lithography is still the main technique. The other situation is in the research. There are new novel techniques developed for the application in micro nanotechnology, but e beam lithography is still work horse or the microstructures fabrication. Also in nanotechnology, there are many bottom-up techniques, but top-down uh, top techniques still play an important role in nanotechnology. So there is outline of my talk. At first, it will be situation in semiconductor production, and then I will <coughs> make a presentation on limitation in of electron beam lithography about the problems examples and some results of our experiments let me introduce first my uh, our laboratory this is small laboratory in uh, slovak academy of sciences we have two equipments one is the powerful variable shaped beam equipment is minimal spot size 50 by 50 nanometer square and 40 kiloton volt uh, electron energy. In addition, we have small system based on scanning electron microscopy with Gaussian beam, but with spot size 1.3 nanometers at 30 keV. And our main objective is uh, investigation of electron beam lithography processes and limitations. But also we, <coughs> we are creating structures for research projects. So the application of electron beam lithography is important part of our group. So let's go to situation in semiconductor production. This is the demonstration. What is the difference in the production on the left? There are a large <laughs> wafers, nearly two half meter, but also structures should be less than 100 nanometers. And to today, chip makers want to seven nanometer no technology. <clears throat> but in the research, we are happy with small wafers and photomass because of we don't need many chips, but only some chips to investigate new materials, new devices, and so on. So the current goal of semiconductor production is to achieve production with critical dimensions about 10 to 20 nanometers and extend, extend to seven nanometers. That is very exciting. Uh, there are publication in 2017 was published seven nanometer static random uh, memory in high key metal gate and fin fed technology where was demonstrated such technology. 
There are only no small size size of structures, but also new materials, high key and new technologies fit fit. So we can say that the main lithography techniques in semiconductor production are not based on particles like electrons or X-ray or ions, but on photons. It is still photon lithography. One of these is immersion lithography with uh, excitement laser, then double patterning, and the favorite, favorite is extreme UV lithography using, using wavelengths 13 and a half nanometers. But alternatively, is developed multi electron beam direct light lithography and nano imprint lithography. So there is an example of such uh, <coughs> chips from production, static random access memory, where you can see, see that this very large chip, and you can see the details of structures where the lines on minimal structures are 20 nanometer uh, in line width. It was published in 2005 in nanotechnology. <clears throat> With decreasing of size of structures, also the, complex, the complexity of patterns is rising dramatically. Uh, in production, there is, uh, for correction of diffraction, there is optical proximity correction method. But with decreasing to sub 20 nanometer technology nodes, there is uh, significantly complicated uh, preparation of such structures. You, you can compare there is normal proximity, op optical proximity correction on the left, and on the right, aggressive improved proximity correction to, to get uh, final structures as it is necessary. So, we can say that today standard lithography in production is uh, with excitement laser with wavelengths 193. And the chip maker are using this lithography uh, immersion patterning and multiple patterning. The example is chip uh, presented by Intel that is seventh generation core pro microprocessor family, uh, which 40 nanometer process. And in, in, uh, in uh, 2016, IBM and this island pars partners announced that they had developed the first chip with seven nanometer node. So that is current situation in production. The demands are very large wafers, but very small structures. So there is principle of immersion lithography. It is based on uh, optical lithography, but uh, between lens and the wafer, there is liquid with the refractive index larger than one. By such liquid, the diff diffraction effects are significantly reduced. And in the uh, last 15 years, immersion lithography was involved in the production. And from 2008, uh, in production, we achieved feature size below 45 nanometers. The second uh, lithography in production is double patterning. That means that if we have dense patterns, then we uh, produce them in two steps. In the first exposure are created patterns which are which, uh, not so dense. And, this, and in the second exposure are additional these patterns. So in result, we get very dense patterns. And uh, in production, it's expected that this technology enables uh, 
less than 20 nanometer structures. So today's favorite in uh, production is extreme UV lithography. It is lithography without uh, optics. It is the set of uh, mirrors and the laser produce plasma source, which uh, produce uh, wavelengths, 13 and half nanometer uh, wavelengths. And the pro productivity on throughput of such technology is expected 100 wafers per hour. There is no other lithography which can do that. So the <coughs> extreme UV is today clear winner in for seven nanometer and even it expected for five nanometer. Uh, lithography as was announced in semiconductor engineering. Alternatively, there is multi-electron beam lithography where instead of one beam, what is standard electron beam lithography in the research, we can divide uh, electron beam using uh, special aperture into many, many uh, thing, thing beams which can expose uh, resist in one shot. So in the research, this uh, this system is one beam, variable shaped. Example is uh, equipment from Vistag Electron Beam, in Germany, SB254, with resolution below 20 nanometers, 200 or even 300 millimeter diameter of wafers, one nanometer writing grid, and the ride on fly system. So that means that this system is very, uh, very high speed for research, but for production is very slow. Using this multi-beam uh, system, there are only one or two companies develop, uh, who develop such systems. One of them is IMS Nanofabrication in Vienna, in Austria. They announced uh, the first high throughput multi beam mass writer in 2016, which reached nearly 300,000 beams. So, such systems was involved in the production and can be used for some application. In uh, addition to extreme UV lithography. So, with this, I can finish this uh, remarks on production because I am from research. So, I have more information on situation in the research. So, let's go to electron beam lithography in the research. Some words about electrons. Electrons are very friendly particles in human life. Everybody knows electrons. There is, there is well developed theory. And the electrons are, are easy to control, or electron beam is easy to control by electromagnetic force, by electromagnetic lenses. Because of there are some known application, the well known is electron microscopy scanning electron microscopy or transmission microscopy, also thin film evaporation, and also at high energy melting of metals, even wedding of metals. But we are happy with very exciting technology, electron beam lithography. Electron striking into the material, uh, have some interactions, but in lithography are important only secondary electrons and backscattered electrons from the substrate.
Concerning of the lithography process, this is similar for every lithography. Difference is only that we use electron beam for exposures and special materials uh, sensitive to electrons. But every of this uh, process influence the final resolution and throughput of lithography process. Generally, electron beam lithography is complex system of the various problem. There is a set of problems with the EBIM tool. And the second problems are connected with the interaction of electron with the resist and substrate. And the very important is our materials, because of raw materials depends the resulting structures and the resolution of uh, electron beam lithography. So there is list list of key factors of electron beam lithography and the effect on final structures. So I will not speak about everything because of it is outside of such presentation. But only some words in the system performance that is minimal spot size. But also this is influenced by the aberrations. So it's it not so that uh, every in every equipment we have the same minimum spot size. Then very important is resist choice and deposition. So I will I will tell in next uh, slides exposure that means beam size and focus beam currents and other parameters of exposure, but also subsequent development, development uh, time, uh, chemical composition of development, and so on. So in electron beam lithography, there is chemical process. That means that we have polymer as uh, for example, PMMA, which is sensitive to electrons. When electron strikes, electron strikes the molecule, then in positive type of process, radiation event results in chain uh, bro broken. And in results, we, we get uh, part of uh, polymer, which is converted to mo monomer. And this part, which was irradiated by electrons, is soluble in the de developer. The other type is a negative type of uh, process, where electrons strike into molecule, cause the change scission. And this part is, is insoluble in developer. So in result, we get structure at this the part where it was uh, irradiated by, by electrons. So this is was example from one of the com commercially available positive resist with name CSAR from Germany and exposed with uh, electron beam at 30 electron volt energy. You can see also the influence of scattering that the side walls depends from the backscattered electrons from the substrate. This, they are not vertical but sloped. This negative example is from uh, well known SUH. Uh, negative resist, which was also exposed at the same electron energy. There is example of 
štandard High Resolution Resist Polymethyl Metacrylate, there is the chemical composition, and also there is polymer under the reaction with electrons, we get monomer. So the exposure induces the scission of the chain of metacrylic monomers. So, so this is only presentation that there are two main uh, interaction of the electrons. Usually, electron beam resist is very thin, from 100 nanometer to one micrometer. And the uh, electrons are uh, scattered in this resist, but on the small angle. But because of uh, penetration of electrons into substrate and backscattered electrons, the influence of electrons is much in much uh, higher distance than than the electron being size. This is uh, schematically uh, demonstrated as a function. This narrow part is from uh, forward scattering and this large part is from back scattered electrons which can reach some micrometers. At, at 40 kV, it is about from five to 10 micrometers. So, uh, we know how to calculate uh, wavelengths of electron by the Broglie uh, equation, where there is important accelerity voltage if we compare it, it, it with the excimer laser, LAN waves, where it's uh, measured in hundreds of nanometers, then in electrons or various uh, accelerated voltage, it's measured in the picometers. So the wavelength is not a limitation for the lithography. Unfortunately, there are aberrations. So, so in real uh, uh, electron beam machines, the minimal spot size is around one nanometers. Also important is uh, source of electrons emitter in current lithography machine and also scanning electron microscopies is used thermal field emission. Uh, uh, sources which which uh, are with uh, low probe current but very good very low resolution up to one nanometer but in variable shade beam is also lantern barium six because of there is the significantly larger Probe current, which, which, which is important for throughput of lithography. So then we can conclude that electron beam lithography is a very sensitive process determined by various factors, starting from resist material and ending with development process. Because of the goal of lithography is high resolution, high quality, and high throughput. And also, uh, maximal yield and reproducibility. That requires very precise control of number of parameters, which affect electron beam lithography process in complex fashion. So every lithographer should measure and uh, evaluate and simulate a lot of parameters. And the ultimate resolution of electron beam lithography is not set by resolution of electron optical system, 
which can approach less than one nanometer, but the resolution of electron beam resist, the size of molecules, for example, and the contribution of electron scattering, mainly by backscattered electrons. But when high throughput is important, also, also, of course, the resolution with electrons also becomes limited by the electron optics. So resist materials is made in, in current situation, the main uh, limiting factor because of electron beam machines are developed on very exciting level. But the resist materials are problems because of there are some requirements on these materials. There is sensitivity to radiation, good contrast, high resolution capability, stability, exposure, latitude, also adhesion, and also very important resistivity against subsequent technological processes because we need to use resist as mask for etching. So there is a list of the main electron beam resists commercially available. And uh, important is the resolution and sensitivity. We can see that for highest resolution on the PMMA as positive and HSQ as negative resist are uh, <coughs> suitable for 10 and, uh, and be below 10 nanometer structuring. Unfortunately, both resists are with low sensitivity, not suitable for high speed production. So the choose of the electron beam resist depends from the application or there is expected the highest uh, uh, resolution or there is expected this quick uh, exposure or, or or everything depends from the application. That is the well-known hydrogen salsec reaction electron be negative resist, which is used for usually for demonstration of resolution in electron beam lithography because of uh, this resist has smaller molecules than PMMA and uh, there are many publications demonstrated uh, uh, patterning at 10 and below 10 nanometers. So concerning of electron beam uh, uh, simulation, there is simple, simple or not simple, but statistical method Monte Carlo, where <coughs> there are simulated uh, electron trajectories along the resist and substrate. So, uh, And in, in, in such or from such methods, we can determine develop resist profile because of we need to simulate absorbed energy density and its dependence on special position. Usually is used two Gaussian approximation where there is a radius and there is absorbed energy density. This part is uh, from the characterized uh, forward scattering. And this bright part characterizes the backscattered electrons. Practically, there is such example of simulation of 5,000 uh, electrons by 
uh, simulation uh, software available on internet. So you can see the this distribution of backscattered electrons in substrates, and this is low or not, not very large scattering in the resistance. There is another good example if we use thick resist 10 micrometer, for example, SU8. Then we can compare uh, electron energies at 20 keV and 30 keV. So the, we can simulate uh, penetration of electrons and to calculate final resist profile. So this is simulation and here is the real structures in this 10 micrometer thin, thin resist exposed with 100 by 100 micrometer square electron beam. So you can see that there is a good uh, agreement with the simulation. So there, this was negative resist and this is positive resist where the main requirement in lithography is high aspect ratio of structures. That means the line width versus uh, thickness. So there, there you can see positive resist thickness one micrometer. The distance or spacing between structures is less than 100 nanometer. So that is good, good structure and uh, nearly vertical side walls, walls, which is necessary for subsequent etching. We have investigated profile of various resist materials as various conditions. Here you can see the development of the PMMA profile of exposed resist PMMA thickness one micrometer from low doses up to higher doses. So then uh, we can observe that even in high contrast PMMA resist is not possible to get uh, ideal vertical sidewalls because of this scattering. And uh, here, for example, the widening at the bottom is in the order of larger than the beam size. But such simulation or experimental results are important for production of structures for application. The main problem in electron beam lithography is the scattering and it is called proximity effects generally. That's a, a term for this to characterization of this scattering. There is an example if we have dense, uh, for example, simple holes, then we can see that that uh, the, this uh, size of holes and shape is, is changed from the border up to the center. So in the center, there is the maximal size and at, at the corner is the minimal because of this backscattering is much larger than uh, uh, such uh, su structures. And in this case, it's 40 kV can reach more than five micrometer uh, area. So our main uh, work is to correct this, uh, this uh, effect and to, to calculate for every spot exposure dose, which is optimal from the point of view of uh, scattering. It is visible in the profile. For example, in this case, we have vertical sidewalls, but if we 
if we decrease the spacing between the these structures, then you can see the Professor? Okay. Professor Kostik, do you hear me? Professor? Professor Kostik, we cannot hear your voice. Professor Kostik, do you hear me? Professor Kostik, we cannot hear your voice. I think uh, your computer, uh, there is a technical problem. Professor, do you hear me? We, okay, <laughs> but uh, we cannot uh, hear your voice about uh, five uh, slides. Last five slides, we cannot uh, hear your voice. Tamam. Now, we Professor? Professor Kostik? No, we can't uh, hear your voice. Do you hear me now? Yes, 
We can hear you. Ah, now yes. Yes. Uh, Do you hear me now? Yes. Uh, just now I we can now hear you. With a microphone. Ah, I am with a microphone or a notebook. Okay. Okay. Uh, professor, uh, I remember that uh, last four or uh, or five uh, your slides we uh, didn't uh, didn't hear your voice. If there is no problem, uh, please yes. repeat your last slides. Oh, I have many of slides. Last five. Maybe I should go to summary. What? Because of uh, I don't know which slides was not. Last. Uh, which, which slides? Uh, if which you... slide I look? I should. If you uh, come back, I can uh, say it to you. Back. Maybe yes. this. Yes. This was the last. Yes. If there's no yes. problem, uh, please uh, repeat your presentation from here. Thank you, Professor. Yes. So the, the, in this in this slide was shown that the, the proximity effects on the left there is the uh, tip structures with vertical sidewall, but at the long distance. And if we decrease the distance between these tips, then we can see that we 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 can get uh, vertical sidewalls uh, at such distance that this is caused by this uh, electron backscattering. So then uh, we should uh, in our work estimate lithographic parameters for the real exposure to measure resistance sensitivity, lineage roughness, lineage roughness and so on. For this, we are making uh, some exposure tests and measure various uh, curves, for example, dependence of thickness on the exposure dose for various resins or dissolution rate, which is important for our processes. There are examples of some of these measurements. Uh, Resist PMMA edges to and uh, SU8. You can see that there is a uh, large uh, difference in the sensitivity and the contrast. So these parameters are used, used for simulation. There is used two Gaussian function. Where the one is part of function characterized forward scattering and the second one back scattering. Then we can calculate exposure parameters and to use them for simulation of final structures and then to optimize parameters of exposure. For example, there is the example of test patterns with various patterns. Uh, due to this uh, proximity effect, we should divide this pattern in, into smaller parts and to calculate exposure doses for every small part. And the result is then we can get final structure. On the left is the uncorrected structure, and on the right is the structure with correction of this pattern. So there is an example of, from our work, for example, the detail of the structures which was divided into smaller rectangular parts. There is a simulation of uh, exposure dose. Every color is the end of the dose. And on, on the right is the result of the structure. So, I am going to conclusions. 
because of time is over. Okay. There are some examples of the structure. So, so in summary, we can say that there is a large number of parameters which will affect electron beam lithography process in complex and interacting fashion. So, this part of high level of theory and uh, process development. A precise control of these parameters require, requires still systematic understanding and study of limiting factors. And uh, And as a corresponding interplay of these numerous process is very important in we are speaking about nanometer structures. So in our lab we uh, investigated mainly characteristic of selected uh, electron beam resist as mentioned at CMMA, CSR, SU8, and MS2. And this we applied for publication of structures for research projects for our customers. So that we can conclude that electron beam lithography is still important technique also in nanotechnology where bottom-up techniques are developed, but top-down method of lithography and uh, Etching is still an uh, important technique for production of micro nanostructures. So, this work was supported by Slovak uh, research projects, Slovak research agency. Our team, which we have researchers, uh, technical engineers, and operators for maintenance and service of all our equipment and additional research for, for thin film and preparation for subsequent processes like uh, restock technique or etching. So thank you for your attention. Thank you, Professor, uh, your uh, nice presentation and uh, very interesting uh, research about electron uh, beam lithography. I would like to uh, remind that, uh, again, our virtual congress uh, has been recorded. Just now, uh, I want to ask all our participants, uh, do you have any questions to Professor Kostik about his presentation? You can write your questions to chat part, or uh, if you want to uh, ask uh, your questions by yourself, uh, please uh, write, you have a, uh, you have a question to chat part and uh, we can open your uh, system voice and you can ask your questions to Professor Kostik by yourself. Professor, we can wait a few minutes to so there is any question. I think there is no question for now. Thank you, Professor, again. If any participant uh, want to ask uh, any uh, question uh, for this uh, presentation, you can send an email to Professor Kostik. Thank you, Professor, again. Thank you also. For everybody is welcome with questions. <laughs> yes.
Yes. Uh, today uh, we have just uh, finished our uh, virtual uh, congress for today. Uh, our uh, second uh, day of the uh, virtual congress has just finished. Uh, tomorrow morning we are going to be here uh, at about uh, 10 a.m. Uh, at 